Today, we're gonna to take a look at another microbrand diver. See, you're hooked already. However, it's not just any microbrand diver, and I think it is one that's worth knowing about, as it's a watch that gets a lot of things right. It's the Jack Mason Hydra Timer, and for a lot of people, I think it could be their perfect diver. Let's do a quick rundown of the specs. This is a watch that's listed at 40 millimeters, although that is more from the 12 to the 6. If you go across from the 3, it's more like 41 with its cushiony and extremely mini turtle like case. Meanwhile, lug to lug is right at 47 millimeters, and total thickness is 13. But that is 13 from the back of its closed case back to the top of its nice double domed box sapphire crystal. The case itself, if you're curious, is more like 11 and a quarter. Lug width here is 20 millimeters, uses a high beat dateless Miyota 9039 movement. Water resistance is a durable 300 meters with a sign screw down crown, and it weighs in around 155 grams on its bracelet, give or take a link or two. And that's a bracelet with quick adjust end links and a fantastic on the fly adjustable clasp. It's also got a scratch resistant coating, ceramic bezel, great loom, is assembled in the USA, and comes complete with further regulation to try and get each watch around plus or minus five seconds a day. Plus, Jack Mason is based here in Dallas, and that means they throw that Texas flare in for free. So, from a spec standpoint, this one gives you just about everything you could want, all rolled up in a unique design. And speaking of unique design, we'll talk about the hour hand later, but yeah, I don't know what it is either. Although, before we get much further, I'm first gonna take this off, and I also want to mention that the watch I'm looking at here is a prototype that was lent into the channel. So as such, all your standard prototype warnings apply, including that there may be some changes to the final production unit that I'm not aware of. Now, if you're familiar with Jack Mason, those specs may sound familiar. And that's because this watch is based on their Stratotimer True GMT that came out last year, or they announced it last year and only shipped a few months ago. Last year, I remember them mentioning to me that they were showing off that GMT at the watch wind-up fairs. And while they were there, they had a lot of people asking for a regular three-handed diver version of it. So I imagine that this is the product from that, as it uses the same sleek case. But rather than just copy and paste the Stratotimer's dial into this one, they wound up creating an entirely new and unique design, giving the Hydra Timer a similar but completely different personality. So you could say that this one is more of a spin-off than a direct sequel. As far as I know, this is their only diver, and every good brand does need a diver. So while it may be just another microbrand diver, it's a pretty solid and good one to look at. Back to the case though. After extensively wearing the Strata timer, both the prototype and now the production unit, and both at home as well as traveling, I can tell you that sharing the same case is also a big plus here as that watch is extremely comfortable and well-balanced to wear. The case design is that of a simple, straightforward tool watch, and I'd say it's overall a bit turtle-ish. In fact, the dimensions are pretty similar to that of the new Seiko Slim Turtles. Although, where Seiko kind of dropped the ball a bit there, go check out the recent review, Jack Mason seems to have hit this one out of the park, and perhaps that's what this hour hand's supposed to be. Anyway. My only real concern with the case is that it has these very polished sides, as over the long run, I'm expecting them to get fairly marked up. Yet here with the Hydra timer, they added that scratch resistant coating. And as such, I'm a little less concerned about it here than the Strata timer. On the rear, they've also moved from an exhibition case back to a closed case back. And as any watch snob will tell you, that is more proper on a true diver. Whether it actually matters, whole other conversation. Either way, they went with it, and they went with a simple design showing all the particulars. I like that it's straight to the point, gives you everything you need, all without being overly elaborate. But I still think it would have been extra cool to have the Texas star etched somewhere in the background. If there's one thing I've learned from living in Texas, it's that you can't have too many stars. Which is kind of ironic considering we're the Lone Star State. But anyway, back to the front, the bezel here has also been changed to a standard 60 minute timer with a ceramic insert. It's unidirectional, 120 click, all the good stuff. Although I did find this prototype to be a bit stiff with a good amount of resistance as you try to turn it. It's not bad and that clicky action is great. 
but you do need to get a good grip on it first. Now, the dial is where things get more interesting. Since Jack Mason isn't too far from my house, I actually went there in person to pick up the prototype. And while I was there, I did get a chance to see all the different colorways. And this gilded version was the one that immediately jumped out at me. So that's the one I asked to borrow. The gold and black color scheme of a gilded dial is always cool, but this one in particular really stood out with its clean and symmetric design, making it kind of a Texas version of a Black Bay 58, which I know is smaller, but remember, everything's bigger in Texas. Now, the indices here are almost entirely small gold dots that rise out of the black abyss with a good amount of height and depth. With the exception of the small triangle over at the 12, as well as the slightly different mini dots at the cardinal points. At first glance, you might actually miss this, but those dots at the cardinal points are subdivided with a gold line right down the middle. It's a little thing, it's a different thing, and at first, maybe a little bit of an odd thing. Yet in the long run, it adds so much to the design while maintaining a very symmetric and clean profile, as it creates a very subtle yet effective crosshair effect sending your eyes and adding to the readability of the watch. Although that subtlety does kind of go out the window when the lights go out. And here you can definitely see what I'm talking about. Beyond that though, there's a chapter ring painted in white, the gold Texas star logo that pops out at you at the top, and quite a bit of text down near the bottom. Plus, we can't forget that handset. Honestly, no idea what to call this one. I've never seen anything quite like it. It's kind of a rounded snowflake, so maybe snowball handset? I don't know. In a lot of ways, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that maybe they just went this route to be different. And different it is. I do applaud the originality though, and in many ways I think it works considering the almost entirely rounded indice set. But one thing to remember is that handsets are a funny thing, and we watch geeks are a fickle bunch. So while a lot of us will be perfectly fine with this, I could easily see a lot of people looking at this and just being completely turned off. And that's not just with this handset. I hear that about all sorts of different handsets, and in particular, Mercedes and Snowflake hands. Regardless of the design, I do want to point out that I actually really like the brush gold texture of the handset, as it not only pops out against the glossy black dial, but it also stands apart from the polish of the indices allowing everything to remain distinct and clear as you look at it. Otherwise, I also like that there's no date to break up the symmetry. I do think that there's way too much text here, which, to be fair, I do say about a lot of other watches. And I do think that I would prefer it if the triangle at the top was just a little bit bigger. Oh, and can't forget, the counterweight of the second hand, which is another touch of Texas or USA flair with a red, white, and blue flag. I think it looks great on the other colorways, but I'm not entirely sure on its gilded version. That, and oftentimes it also looks like a French flag. It's not necessarily a problem, just pointing it out. But overall, it's a good interesting design, and I think everything flows together nicely. It's a watch that gives you a sense of familiar comfort, yet is also intriguing and interesting to look at, as you've never seen anything else exactly like it. Now, as for the loom, loom is great. Personally, I would like to see a little bit more loom on the bezel, but the dial and the hands are good. It has a very distinct look and easily outpaces a Seiko diver. So loom should not disappoint here. Now, as far as the strap and bracelet options, it looks like Jack Mason is changing how they're doing things here. Like with the Strata timer, it automatically came with a bracelet, but here it looks like they're starting to give you options. It looks like the watch will come on these Tropic rubber straps. And these are straps that actually came with my Strata timer, but I didn't get any footage of them on the Hydra timer. So bear with me here, and they are pretty good rubber straps. But after that, you can pick either a second strap or a bracelet. And this is basically what Vare has been doing for a while. Now again, the rubber straps here are great, but I think most people are gonna be interested in the bracelet, which of course does cost a little bit more. And since it does share the same case as the Strata timer, the bracelets here are interchangeable. So you currently have the option of getting the same bracelet that comes with the Strata timer, which is a seven link Super Jubilee, or a more standard president style bracelet that was made for, for the Hydra timer. Both of these bracelets are great options, 
They both have quick release end links, and they both share that fantastic on the fly adjustable clasp. And the only real quality difference I saw was that the edges of that president bracelet were a little bit sharp in comparison, but that might be more because it was a prototype. Either way, I think they're both great and some of the better bracelets I've seen in this price range. So I think it really just comes down to whether or not you want something that's a little more flashy or maybe a little more tooly. As for value, well, this is where things get tricky and where Jack Mason's gonna lose a few people. So hold on to your hats. Come on, you know I had to make that pun somewhere. Anyway, right now these are selling for $8.89 with rubber straps and $9.89 if you want one of the bracelets. Now, if you look around, it won't take you very long to find another watch with a Miyota 9015 or 9039 for a lot less than what Jack Mason is charging. I mean, at a thousand bucks, you're more likely to see a Swiss movement than a Japanese. So Jack Mason is definitely charging a premium for these. This might be messing with the lights in the camera. But even beyond the quality aspect, Jack Mason's doing a couple of things here that I think justify the cost and make it pretty hard to do a true apples to apples comparison. Although the confusing aspect for me is more when I compare this watch to their GMT, the Strata Timer. Because with bracelets, they both cost about the same. And typically you'd expect a GMT to be more than a normal diver. So I don't have an answer for you there. But Jack Mason, I think, is going the extra mile with these watches by having them assembled in the United States. Now, yes, there is a feel-good American aspect to that, and I think it is debatable on whether or not they do a better job assembling them than the Chinese factories. But more importantly here, I think it adds another level of quality control in the manufacturing process, as a third party that wasn't involved with the parts development is taking more time putting the watches together. And along the same lines, they're also further regulating them, attempting to get each watch down to plus or minus five seconds a day. Now, I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to do that with every single watch, but I can tell you that with the production strata timer I have, it's running right around negative three seconds a day. So it's looking likely. Either way though, I think it's pretty hard to argue that further regulation is not a premium feature. I mean, yes, you can regulate a watch yourself, and on a $60 Vostok, hell, I'm all for it. But for me, as the price goes up, so does my hesitation when it comes to regulating. And at a certain point, I think a more accurate watch is just something you should expect. And this is one area in particular that I think Seiko is completely failing with when it comes to the 6R movements, which coincidentally are selling for right around the same price as this. But either way you look at it, these are things that add to the cost and therefore the final price. Bottom line though, if you can get over the novel hour hand as well as the price, then the Hydra Timer is a great solid tool watch. One that gives you everything you could want. Every brand needs a good diver, as it's often the starting point with the brand. The first watch anyone ever really buys. So in a lot of ways, Jack Mason really does need a diver. And I think the Strata Timer was a great starting point. Yet, I also appreciate that they created something entirely new with the Hydra Timer. There's definitely some similarity between the two, yet at the same time, they have their own distinct designs and personality. It's a watch that's a little retro with its mini Thule turtle case and domed crystal, yet it's still very striking to look at with its gilded color scheme. So if you're interested, you know where to look and it's an easy recommendation for me. But what are your thoughts about the Hydra Timer? Let me know down below. And if you can think of another diver that does it better, mention that as well. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.